Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video where I show you how I took my max in-game performance from this to this. Today we're going to look at the cooling system. I found that my MacBook Pro was constantly thermal throttling itself because of the excessive heat it was generating while playing these games. And so what I did is I created what's known as a Peltier cooling pad for my Mac. Uh, these aluminum unibodies are fantastic for transferring heat outside of the computer components and into the body itself and I planned to utilize that and transfer the heat out of the aluminum body and into a heat sink where I could dissipate it into the atmosphere. Now the hardware I'm starting out with is an LG 1080p monitor and an aluminum rain design MacBook Pro stand. The, uh, the stand is fairly important. Um, you don't need one this fancy. You could just use a hunk of aluminum, but I already had it and uh, so this is what I'll be using. The reason why it's so important is you need somewhere for the heat to go until you can dissipate it into the atmosphere. Also in the project I got a Cooler Master PC case, Mini ATX design. Um, you do not need this. I bought this for another project that I'm working on and I figured I might as well use it uh, until that one gets underway. You also need a power supply. I, again, for another project that I'm working on, I'm, I got an EVGA 500 watt power supply. But you can use anything. This power supply, for example, was lying around in my technology bin and it would have worked just fine. This is a 12 volt output 5 amp power supply which produces 60 watts and uh, each Peltier cooler I am using requires 60 watts of electricity. So two of these power supplies would work just fine or any other uh, thing you could probably dig up around the house. I also got a motor pump speed controller to change how cold the cooling pad would get uh, so I wouldn't uh, uh, build up ice on the inside of my computer and I could adjust it depending on the game's uh, demand. In an attempt to make this look professional I wanted to mount the dial in the back of the PC case so I took a one quarter inch drill bit which matched the size nicely and I drilled a hole in the back right above where the graphics card would go. This area seemed ideal as it was on a large flat panel in front of an area that seemed or appeared be unrequired by other computer components. Using a 10 millimeter wrench, I fastened it in place and stuck the knob on. It took a little bit of adjustment to get it where I wanted it to be, but after turning the knob all the way to the down position, I was able to just remove the cap and put it back on. So the minimum and the maximum settings would be in their logical areas. Getting back to the motor speed controller, I wanted to protect the bottom side from any short circuiting as it was going to rest on the bottom of the PC case. So I bought a pad of Need Eraser, which I got from the Arts and Crafts store, funny enough, and I smushed it across the bottom of the uh, circuit board for the motor speed controller. This would protect it from any electrical short circuits uh, and harm. Because I'm using a PC's power supply, I bought a 4-pin extension cable, cut it in half, and used that to tap into the power supply's uh, CPU output. From there, I could just place the motor speed controller in the bottom of the case, below the knob, normally where the graphics card would go. But to enable the power supply, I had to use the paper clip trick, where I short circuit the green and the black wires for the motherboard connector. Link in the video description on how to do that. And now for the whole point of this build, the Peltier coolers. These little pads, when applied, when you apply a electrical current, get cold on one side and hot on the other. They're effectively a heat pump. So what we want to do is put the cold side up where the computer is going to go and the hot side down on top of our aluminum heatsink or whatever heatsink that you plan on using. From 
there. It's a matter of just soldering the wires coming out of the motor speed controller to the wires going into the Peltier cooler. I will also mention that electrical tape uh, would work instead of solder if you're on a budget. Um, solder is the best, but there are other options. A buck fifty for electrical tape will get you a whole roll. As far as placement goes for the Peltier coolers on your heat sink, you want them nice and high. As you can see in this image, um, your graphics card and your heat control systems are all in the back of the computer, so you want to put your cooling, uh, your Peltier coolers there. Now, you also need a way of dissipating that heat. So, uh, little heat fins like this are dirt cheap. You place them on the bottom of your heat sink. Uh, from there, you just need a fan of some sort to blow them off. I have a little fan that you plug into a USB port. Um, you could also get for five bucks, you can get a CPU fan for a computer and wire that into your um, the same power supply that you're wiring in your, your Peltier coolers. But either way, um, getting these little fins on the bottom and getting some air to them is critical. I tried this without these fins and the laptop stand got extremely hot. It was burning, it got so hot. So how did this o affect the overall performance of my computer? Well, this footage that you're watching now was recorded when I only had the monitor and the Peltier coolers hooked up. So uh, what you're seeing is what you get. It looks pretty good. It sure looks a heck of a lot better than this. So I was pretty happy with it. The, uh, like I said earlier in the other video, uh, the monitor was probably one of the biggest things I could do for my computer, especially when it came to time to actually record the video. The Peltier cooler, what it did, I didn't notice any um, dramatic improvement on performance. What I noticed was um, the thermal throttling uh, was removed. It didn't thermal throttle itself anymore. So while I couldn't crank the game up to higher settings, the graphics card could boost when it needed to boost. So when there's lots of explosions going on in World of Tanks, when there's lots of things happening, lots of demand on the system in short bursts, it wouldn't be throttled and the computer chips could ramp up like they needed to to give me that performance. So what it meant was that I no longer had stutters, right? When there's a lot of explosions, the game wouldn't stutter and glitch or, or, or briefly freeze. It would continue to have silky smooth uh, 60 frames a second, uh, 45 frames a second, whatever, you know, my, uh, whatever I had my settings set up. So yeah, highly recommend it. Um, the grand total wattage of this system was 120 watts because I was using two pads, each at 60 watts. Uh, they have more powerful pads if you want to go colder. They have less powerful ones. You can just get one, you can get two, depending on your system and what you want out of it. Anyway, so this was my enhanced cooling. Um, like I say, the, the temps went down a couple degrees. Um, the biggest thing I noticed was no more thermal throttling, uh, which was really nice. No more stuttering, no more, uh, you know, pauses in performance when there's a lot happening on the screen. So highly recommend it if uh, you are a tinkerer yourself. If not, like I say, the external monitor was by far the best option up to this point. Have fun, guys. See you out there.